Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at some problems and errors that often come up in student writing. The errors that we're talking about here are errors in building proper sentences and using words and punctuation correctly. Here are the errors we're going to discuss in this video. Incomplete sentences, run-on sentences, pronoun antecedent agreement or disagreement, and incorrect apostrophes. The goal of this video is to introduce these common problems so that when you get feedback on your writing, you can understand better what that feedback means and therefore what you need to fix. With practice, you'll also be able to spot and fix these errors in your own work or avoid them altogether. Your tutor might tell you that a sentence you've written is incomplete or that it's a sentence fragment. But what makes a sentence complete or incomplete? Take a look at this sentence. Our flight was delayed. In English, a complete sentence has at least a subject and a verb or verb phrase. Here, our flight is the subject and was delayed is the verb phrase. That means that our flight alone is not a full sentence, nor is was delayed. We need both the subject and the verb or verb phrase to make the sentence full. The phrase, our flight was delayed, is also an example of a clause. You can think of a clause as a building block of a sentence. A sentence can be just one clause, or it could combine more than one clause. Some clauses can stand on their own as a sentence. These are called independent clauses. Our flight was delayed is an example of an independent clause. Some clauses need to be attached to an independent clause to make sense. These are called dependent clauses. To illustrate, have a look at these three examples. Now, which of these three phrases needs to be attached to the independent clause to make sense? And which can stand alone as a sentence? The first two need to be attached to the independent clause. They can't stand alone as sentences. They are dependent clauses. In general, clauses that start with because and which or who are dependent. However, the last clause here can stand alone. Notice that it doesn't start with a connecting word like because, which or who, and it also contains both a subject and a verb phrase. This is an independent clause. It is possible to put more than one independent clause in the same sentence. However, you need to take care about how you join them together. Importantly, you shouldn't simply stick two independent clauses together with a comma. If you do that, you get what's called a run-on sentence. So, to join two independent clauses together, you can't just use a comma, but what you can do is use a coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunctions in English are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. For example, we can take our two independent clauses, our flight was delayed, it was very annoying, and we can join them together with and. Another example, two independent clauses here. If we want to join them together, we can't just use a comma, but we can use the coordinating conjunction, but. And another example of joining two independent clauses, this time with the coordinating conjunction, so. So if your tutor says that you've got a sentence fragment or an incomplete sentence, Check that your sentence has a subject and a verb and that you haven't got a dependent clause standing on its own. Or if your tutor says that you've got a run-on sentence, you need to think about how you can split it into separate sentences or join the parts together with a coordinating conjunction. The next issue we're going to look at is pronouns and antecedents and whether they agree or not. 
First of all, let's understand what a pronoun is and what an antecedent is. Pronouns are those words that stand in for things or people that have already been introduced earlier. So words like it, she, her, he, him, they, them, but also that and those. The antecedent is the thing or the person that the pronoun refers back to. So the thing or the person that was introduced earlier. In order to understand your writing, the link between the pronoun and its antecedent needs to be clear. Otherwise, your reader won't be able to see the links and will get lost. So being clear here means two things. Firstly, every pronoun must actually have an antecedent. And secondly, every pronoun has to agree with its antecedent. Let's look at an example to illustrate. The goal of animal rights activists is to promote the idea that they have basic rights and that they should not suffer cruelty. Okay, so we've got a pronoun here, they, which is repeated. What does it refer back to? They must refer to a plural noun, but if I look back over the previous phrase for a plural noun, all I can find is animal rights activists. That can't be right. It can't be that this writer is saying that animal rights activists have basic rights and shouldn't suffer cruelty. Obviously, it must be that animals have rights and shouldn't suffer cruelty. However, there is no plural noun animals in this sentence for this pronoun they to refer to. So the meaning here is unclear for the reader. Once we supply the antecedent, the sentence becomes clear. We have the pronoun here, which now clearly refers back to the correct plural antecedent. Lastly, let's look at apostrophes. The rules on using apostrophes in English are clear, so make sure you know them. Let's go over them now. In a nutshell, apostrophes in English are used for two things. For marking possession, i.e. ownership, as in Smith's theory, or for indicating that there are missing letters. In other words, a contraction, such as haven't or couldn't. Although, remember that you shouldn't use contractions in academic writing anyway. There is an important exceptional case, and that's its and its. Its with an apostrophe is the contracted form of it is. So the apostrophe marks the missing letter. When we want to express possession with it, so something belonging to it, we don't use an apostrophe. One very important rule to remember about apostrophes in English is that they should never be used for marking plurals. Even if the word ends in a vowel, even if it's an acronym, don't use an apostrophe. So we've taken a look at some classic problems here. Now, if your tutor gives you feedback about incomplete sentences, run-on sentences, pronoun antecedent agreement or apostrophes, you'll know what you need to do to solve it. However, if you do get feedback that you don't understand, make sure to ask your tutor to clarify it or help you understand the problem. Lastly, you don't need to wait for your tutor's feedback to start improving your work. As you know, revision is part of the writing process. So as you revise, you can also look out for the errors that we've introduced in this video. Good luck with your writing.